Taco Tuesday, it's Taco Tuesday. Come on. Taco Tuesday, it's Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, it's Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, it's Taco Tuesday. Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of the TacoTuesday.com podcast. I'm your host, Corey, joined once again by my co-host Crawford. Hello, hello. Uh, we are once again joined by the wonderful Lauren Smith, who you all remember from Next Level Chef on Hulu. She's here to tell us what is next for her in life. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. Great to see you guys again. Yeah, good to see you too. This is we really cool to get like... A returning guest, because uh, obviously for people who watched the first episode, you guys were still in the midst of the season then. We had you, Chef Chris Zorin on, um, but now it is over. We can talk about all of it, but also life after and everything else. But yeah, this is going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. I'm also looking forward to eating some tacos. Once again, Carla from Jellas was so lovely to bring in this awesome spread. So Carla, thank you so much. Carla, these uh, chorizo breakfast tacos are magnifique. Life. Amazing. Super good. So, Lauren, yes. tell us about it. You've got a lot of exciting plans. I have a lot of uh, fun things in the works. Um, I actually have started kind of a new weird concept, something that no one else is doing right now. Um, I've gone back to aviation a little bit, um, but I am starting a company basically teaching private jet flight attendants how to cook on board, but we're doing live cooking classes on an active flight. So essentially the Ooh. passengers are there. I'm basically the first flight I cook, I show them what can be done, how to do it. Um, and then the next flight they do it. And then if we have time on ground, we'll do like ground training at, you know, a hotel or Airbnb or whatever. So it's yeah. been fun. I've done uh, two flights thus far and uh, it went great. So we'll see. I think it could be a fun little new thing. And then hopefully I'll also teach some professional chefs kind of how to transition from cooking on ground into the air. And then I can just have them do my dirty work for me. Right. That's yeah. like a surgeon teaching you how to do it in the middle of the surgery. <laughs> I know. Yeah. With a I live mean, audience. Like, I, I, I've been on a private plane, not for a ride, but I've helped like load it. Cause again, my mom has done this for years. So I've helped yes. her um, load up galleys and stuff like that. For anybody who has not been on a private jet, even the big ones, like these are not big spaces. No, it's micro. So two things. Number one, how are you, I guess, how are you fitting people in to show people how to do it? But also, like, what is it like to actually cook on one of these planes? Because everybody thinks, oh, it's so it's luxurious. They're wonderful to ride in. And yeah, they're nice planes. But for you to cook on them, this is impressive. It's insane. I mean, because, you know, not not most of them, but at least the, the person that I was flying with um, for the last eight years expected like Michelin star dishes to come out of a galley. Um, which included one hot plate, a steam oven, a microwave, and, you know, I brought an immersion blender on, and that was my equipment. You basically have, like, a Tokyo apartment. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and that was, like, a luxury Tokyo apartment. Yeah. Let's be real. But, uh, yeah, so it was very, very hard, but it was cool because it was such a challenge. You know, I didn't have all of the gadgets, so it was kind of, you know, like on the show, the basement was pretty comfortable for me because that was my wheelhouse. I had limited items so once you get to the top or have all of these extra things it's almost like well, i don't i don't know what to do with this i'm confused like just give me the basics and i'll make something amazing um and so kind of trying to teach other chefs how to do that um and then also teaching flight attendants how to utilize those things because they do everything changes at altitude right like water boils at a different temperature so right. if the water's boiling you think oh it's 161 we're great Actually, at altitude, it's boiling at like 141. And so just all of those different elements change. Everything immediately dries out. Like you cut a piece of bread and it you can literally like watch it like yeah. start to shrivel. Yeah. Um, so it's just a really interesting, you know, kind of fun, scientific, nerd out, chefy thing to do right now. That's really cool. I don't cool. know. I mean... You know, I've been on several just regular commercial planes. I'm not I'm not cool enough to be flying around <laughs> private jets. One day I hope to get with it, but, man. Uh, I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, airplane food thus far. I mean, even when you fly in first class, it can be okay, but they they need some help. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, because also so your palate changes at altitude, and that's something that a lot of people don't realize. We recognize 
like on a plane, we crave those salty snacks. It's mm-hmm. because we actually can't taste salt um, or the our ability declines at altitude. And so mm. super, super salty things taste really good. Same with like umami. We actually taste like it's hard for us to taste umami. So we want like a heavily packed umami. So like ramen is great on an airplane. Right. Um, sweetness is actually sweeter. So a lot of people, they'll eat, you know, like a Snickers bar and they're like, well, that tastes weird. You know, it's like too much sugar. Something's weird about this. Um, So all of that goes into like planning a meal and cooking on a jet. So, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting process. Took me eight years to figure all that stuff out. But I think I got it nailed down enough that I could teach other people. Private jets, unless I'm wrong, private jets fly at a higher altitude than commercial too, don't they? Yeah, we do. So they actually, they do fly. So typically they cruise at like 40 to 41,000 feet. Okay, that's what I thought it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, And then commercial airliners are like in the 20s, like 25, maybe 30. Um, But our cabin pressure is actually lower. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it costs more money to basically pressurize the cabin. Right. And so private jet, they pressurize the cabin a little bit more, even though we're flying higher. Well, because commercial jets, they're they're pressurized to be the equivalent of like eight thousand feet in elevation. I think even higher. Yeah, because I I got to fly on the dream. I'm like a Dreamliner. aviation geek. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Dreamliner is pressurized at six thousand versus eight thousand feet. Yeah. So. Yeah, the Dreamliner is nice, and it's it true. Cool. Like, you sleep pretty good on that. Like you wake up feeling a little more refreshed. Same yeah. as the jet. Like I mean, if you're flying on it as much as, like, say, a flight attendant does, mm-hmm. it doesn't really you know. They don't, they don't no handle benefit. turbulence so well. How does that work, actually? That's a good point. When you cooking? when you hit turbulence while you're cooking, I mean, what is the... Oh, hope for the best. You <laughs> cross your fingers and kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> That's why we don't uh, make caramel. Yeah. Typically, so I would... Um, I always tell people, you know, if you're going to start cooking, always check in with your pilots and, you know, double check if there's any weather ahead or mm-hmm. any expected turbulence. But obviously, there's, you know, pockets that you just don't see the clear air turbulence yeah, yeah exactly. it doesn't show up on the radar yeah. so so you never know what you're gonna get um knock on wood i've never gotten terrible turbulence I know. <laughs> um i've never been in really bad turbulence i've had some other flight attendants and friends um that have experienced it and gotten really like tossed around had to go to the er like bad um but thank God, because I'm I always have like boiling water going. Sometimes I'm like deep frying something. So there's fry oil over there oh. and I'm like doing something else over here. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, sometimes it's stupid. Deep frying on a like plane a cover for the fryer. So like if you do hit turbulence, you can just kind of nah. how do you nah. do, how do you, a little bit of <laughs> just hot like, ah, grease we'll burns. It out. It's fine. <laughs> what do you I'm a chef, man. I'm already covered in burns. No big deal. So. When you're teaching these classes, are you teaching kind of that, hey, really elevated style? Or are there times where you're like, hey, we can also do comfort food on these? Because I remember the last time, and again, she's not flying as much anymore, but when my mom was flying for her client, she came out to Orange County. She actually got cellas for the plane, like pre-catered and everything, was able to reconstitute it on the plane and things like that. And the freaking, the family she was flying for loved it. Yeah. Because they were like, oh, tacos. Who doesn't love that? Awesome. Is it always kind of that fancy style or is it always like, hey, we can also crank out this kind of comfort food or things like that? So it's basically it's curated um, to the flight attendant specifically okay. or, you know, their accounts. So yeah. whatever they're looking for. So I have it starts from beginner, beginner. Like I don't I burn water. I don't know how to cook at all. So it's super, super basics, you know, safety and, you know, general cooking um, knife skills basically what you need to know to get started. And then there's like, you know, kind of mid range. And then there's, I'm already a chef or I'm, I've been cooking comfortably on the jet for a while. Um, This was like one of the girls that I recently did. She was actually very good. Like she does a great job. She just felt uninspired. She was kind of making the same old stuff and she wanted to elevate her, you know, not super high level, fancy, fancy food, but, really good food and she just wanted to make it look prettier and kind of add some more elements to it she would do like a four element dish instead of a six element dish got it so that's kind of what i was teaching her how to do so it's like a i have a secret uh never fail sauvignon like you can use it for hollandaise you know pretty much any like warm egg sauce um I'm not going to share the recipe with you guys no no you have to sign up and learn (laughs) you have to pay for it obviously (laughs) But yeah, it's an unbreakable sauvignon. So are you, when you are catering and cooking for these flights, do people tell you 
like the guests that are going to be on the plane? Are they telling you what kind of food they want and you prepare it? Are you surprising them with the menu? How does that work? So it's been interesting because for the last eight years, it's been my like totally up to me. I can make whatever I want. And I usually just do, you know, like a six to ten courses. Right. Sometimes they would pick, you know, just a few things. Majority of the time they would say, OK, great, I'll have the menu. Uh-huh. Um, and so that's always been my experience. And now that I'm doing a little bit of this, like contracting as a chef on a jet, it is more, you know, they're like, OK, I want this, this, this and this specifically. And a lot of it, it's not like not my style, not what I want to cook, which right. is a bummer. And so you want to tell them like, hey, I'm a chef. Could I curate a menu for you? I promise you're going to like what I'm serving you. Right. Um, But that's not how the industry works because they're so used to catering, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's garbage, like really bad quality food. And so they're like, I'm just going to get a tuna sandwich. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, we could do better. Yeah, than a tuna sandwich. Yeah, yeah, you would like to think so. Yeah, let me just—it's like tuna on white bread. I'm good. <laughs> like ah, man. I'm switching it up to sourdough. <laughs> I'm doing like, something. <laughs> getting brave. <laughs> I'm making it an Italian toggle tuna. Right. right. Screw it. Yeah, it's been interesting for sure. Yeah. No, I just had a uh, when I just got back from Europe when we were flying back. They gave me like a little cheese toasty. You know, like real cheese, but they call them toasties. They call them toasties. toasties. It's yeah. better. It's a better name. It's a better name. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's not that fancy, but it, it hit the spot. Yeah. They were kind of a useless little story to tell you all. So, no, it's the fact that they call them toasties and that's adorable. And if anybody didn't know that, now you do because that's, yeah. yeah. It's a toasty. It's one of those, they won in the name game on that. Yeah. It's true. We're not grilling. Same with crumpets. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. I know. Crumpets are so, so cute. cute. Also, tea is not my jam. No. How do we all feel about tea? Because I, I went over there I, and I, I, I was still drinking. I'm, I I'm, hate tea. I'm on, Ted, I'm on Ted Lasso's team on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you haven't seen Ted Lasso, you need to get on it. It is a great show. Nothing against anybody who is from the UK or watches in the UK. If you do, hi and thanks for it. But no. Mm-mm. Just yeah. no. I guess, have you all, have you seen the show, Ted Lasso? Yes, I have. So, and I totally agree. I am a, uh, I'm in Ted Lasso's court yeah, yeah. That. i guess garbage the guy that plays jamie tard he was uh goes around to all his friends he's like dude i'm like super famous in america everybody knows who jamie tard is they're like yeah whatever whatever and i guess now his friends are like starting to see americans come over they're like oh jamie tard <laughs> he's like i told you guys people know who i am in america i'm a big deal yeah big deal. Uh, yeah w- wipe the dust off whatever <laughs> yeah but anyway Speaking of big deals, yeah. obviously now we kind of mentioned the opening. Um, Next Level Chef has ended. We can kind of chat about it all, yes. obviously. And I, I was crediting you before we started recording because the last episode, literally like the day after we recorded it when we had you on the first time, was your elimination episode. So credit words due for having a poker face on this show, not being able to share. But what was that experience like for you now that it's kind of behind you? And, and what is life after Next Level Chef kind of been like now that the show has kind of run its course and it's kind of continuing to just give you that momentum you built on it. It's been crazy. Honestly, I think I had mentioned before when I was here, um, this incredible community of, and like friendship that we built with that top 15. Um, we still talk every day. Uh, a lot of the chefs have actually done some meetups. Um, they've, they're making, you know, it's like, I think Jordan just moved actually to LA. So Jordan's here, Mata's here. A large group of us are in like Orange County, LA area. Um, So they're all meeting up. I have not gotten to meet up with a lot of them. A few times actually, but um, it's been a minute. But yeah, we're, it's, so that's been great. Um, And then I don't know, it's, you know, there was this crazy momentum right when the show ended, essentially when I got back from filming. Um. And you guys hadn't even, the show hadn't even aired yet. But there was this crazy momentum of like, what's next? You know, we had been filming. It was go, go, go every day from, you know, 6 a.m. until like 9 p.m., six days a week. And so I wanted kind of that push, that drive again. Um, And, you know, we made a lot happen. I was doing tons of events. I did um, Table for 10 here in Orange County, which is a big, like, great event. Shout out to them. Yeah, Table for 10, amazing. Chef Pascal, amazing. I've been uh, kind of working with Chef Pascal, who's a big time chef here in Orange County, very well respected. Um, And through them and through, you know, Chris Zorin, I met just the most incredible network of chefs here in Orange County. 
Um, and everybody just wants to work with you. Like I've gotten people want to open a restaurant with me. People want to do events with me. People want to, you know, it's like there's so many different things and everything is kind of flying at you as once because, you know, you have the steam of the show, I mm-hmm. think. And it's just like the kind of new kid on the block, right? Yeah. Like the yeah. new kid, on, new chef on the block. And everyone's like, what's she all about? You know, like come in my restaurant. Let's hang <laughs> out. Come, you know, do like a, a little night of stodging here. Um, so it's been fun, especially cause I am, you know, a self-taught chef. So I've had, I've gone into a couple restaurants and I've taken over the kitchen for the night. Um, not necessarily a pop-up, just kind of having the opportunity to cook in a professional kitchen has been mind blowing. Um, like a guest shift. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Like a guest yeah. chef night. Um, and it's, it's insane. Like to actually work behind the line and like run a kitchen, especially a busy kitchen. Um, that was just, that was next level, actually. That was very, <laughs> well very played. fun. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. A busy Someone, someone's media no trained. Joke. It's no yeah. joke. And it was, no. so this was um, Tango down in Laguna Beach. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I took over their kitchen for a night and it was two chefs. It was myself and a sous chef. And this, it, I think it was the busiest night that they had had yet since they opened. It was madness. Um but I had the time of my life. I was like, yes, this is, I love this. This is my vibe. Like I, you know, it's especially cause I hadn't been cooking for a little bit since the show. Yeah. Um, so it was just like brought life back into me, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was amazing. Um, been working with, uh, chef Brandon Hall with time well spent catering here in orange County. Amazing. That guy, he, like absolutely so talented. Um, and so I've, ha- I've just had like this, inspiration from the community and i think that's probably the biggest thing that i've learned is building that chef network and kind of working with all these people is what means a lot to me um so yeah i've been having i've been having a blast nice. just kind of honestly i've been like messing around that's <laughs> quit, cool. quit my full-time job everyone thinks i'm crazy because it was it was a good gig i had a good gig but i was like i need i don't want to be just you know a flight attendant i want to go more in like private chef or, Mm -hmm. you know, follow the culinary path a little bit more. And I've been working my butt off for eight years with like no life. So I just want to have fun. Yeah. No, you're definitely doing not only the bold thing, which is like trying to chart, you're literally charting a direction going into something that nobody's really even considered doing before. Like you're, you're creating an industry almost. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you found a way to get out of the nine to five. Yeah. That is, well, not, not even, I guess chefs really don't have a nine to five. No, it's more of a five to two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chefs in regular restaurants, I mean, the schedule is just awful. But yeah. now you get to travel. I mean, you get to cook on planes, go see the world. It's a pretty cool gig. I'm definitely a little bit jealous. It's pretty good. You know, it has its ups and downs for sure. Um, but yeah, it's it's been fun. I'm making my old schedule, hanging out with friends, flying to New Orleans to party and have fun. Like, yeah, I'm living my best life right now it could be worse yeah it could be worse yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) there's um whenever shows like this are on there's kind of a natural momentum you know this is a massively massively broadcasted television show you get an influx of social media followers a whole new network to kind of market yourself and things like that the show ends and inevitably there will be a new season you kind of mentioned the new kid on the block thing eventually there will be another season there will be more new kids on the block how do you keep cultivating that network that you've garnished and how do you keep growing it so that they're not like you'll get some fair weather social media friends that are just there for like the show like that's probably inevitable but how do you get that massive network and then keep growing it from there you know what's crazy is i did not get a like pretty much i mean i got a few i didn't really get a ton of new followers from the show my follower base has pretty much stayed the same and it's mostly my like aviation community. Nice. Um, I would argue that might be a better thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, because they are, they're true followers. Like I've, yeah. you know, I've had them for years now. Um, but, you know, there were, there was a little like up and down with the, from the show. But for the most part, it was all just like my aviation community and they've been so sweet and they're so like constantly, anytime I post anything about the show, they're like, we're so proud of you. You know, you're repping for the flight attendant community. Um, But I think definitely I've been terrible. I've been so bad. I'm the worst at posting. Like I have this great community of people and I'll I'll post like a story, you know, like I'll take a photo of a taco. (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's Tuesday. <that> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I have the whole Taco Tuesday.com com crew on yeah. my ass all the time because I never post. Yeah, it's um, hard. It's just something I don't even I've never really like been into social media. I've never used it so much. And yeah, I know I need to jump on that train, but I'm just, a, just also like don't take myself seriously at right. all. So like any photo you could like if you scroll through my social media, my tongue is out 90 percent of the time. I can't take like a straight like look professional, like an look actual right. headshot. No, yeah, it's just like, like look great, Lauren. I'm just like, eh. <laughs> all my photos when people tell me to pose, I'm like, I don't even know what to do. I never know what to do with my hands. You all probably see that on here. I'm like doing T-Rex. this, trying not to. Yeah, I'm like, just <laughs> I have like a couple positions I rest in. And then, uh, oh my god, disaster! Disaster! Sorry, Alan. Sorry, disaster. Um, I forgot what I was even saying. (sighs) Oh, yeah, Uh, it's difficult to uh, be serious and take it is make uh, social media content, yeah, yeah, especially. I mean, it's like it's better not to be serious. I think think so. I mean, (laughs) look at the show, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) it's fun to be silly for sure. Like, I like to sing and talk to myself and be a weirdo, which is great. Um, but also, it's just even a matter of like filming. Right. Because if you're especially for me, like people want cooking videos and it's like, all right, let me, you know, I got this like old iPhone 12 that I'm propping up against like a soda can in my kitchen (laughs) and I'm like turning away from it. It's like grease splashes on it. And like, well, damn, now that, you know, I got to restart. So that is the that's the biggest thing. Just creating content. It's I think so hard to huge. be professional. It's already hard enough being an adult. I know. Don't, don't make me be a filmmaker too. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Like, yeah. No. <laughs> so everyone's like, come on. I think even actually Next Level Chef, they told us, they were like, you need to create content. Like you need to like, like hashtag Next Level Chef, tag us in everything. Mm-hmm. But they wanted us to be making like a video for every episode. Like behind the scenes stuff, kind of like checking yeah, it, like no, promoting, just, like, just kind of like helping share. Anything. Yeah. Mostly like they wanted, and we all talked about it and we were going to do it, but obviously none of us did it. Like some of us did, but we were supposed, we were going to make like remake the dish, you know, that we oh, made for the okay, show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is a fun idea. Yeah. And it's like, pfft, man. As if know? you weren't busy enough already. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's <laughs> like, I'm flying 25 days a month and this is not, it's not appealing to me. I'm usually, I'm living out of a hotel for the most part. I'm not going to be filming any content for you. From the aviation side of things. Yes. Where is your favorite place that you've been? Mm, that I've been. That's a hard one. Right. Okay. Where's it's like your, trying to pick your favorite song. It's, I can't just choose. Answer one. that, but I have a, I have a part two to that one. Okay. Um... I would say, honestly, I would say south of France. The reason being, I have been there so many times, it feels like home. Like when I go back, I know I have friends there. Um, It's a very like interesting place. They have um, like, you know, the mountains are really beautiful and you can go like rock climbing up there. They have zip lining. They've got all this. You can go skiing in the winter. they have waterfalls out there. It's just beautiful. You know, it's very much, it reminds me of California in the sense that there's the beach, but in the same day you can go skiing. Right. So nice. it feels like home, but, you know, they don't speak my language. Right. Fair. <laughs> they actually speak a nicer sounding language. It's much I prettier. Yeah. It's much prettier. I love, I love French. It's just, I can't speak it very well. And they Fair. make fun of me for it sometimes, so. It is a nice language. I was walking around France saying bonjour all. Bonjour. Over. I'm like, Bonjour. <laughs> It's just straight and glorious. Long hour, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me get one of those creepies. Um, I know that we gotta. I know that we gotta wind it down soon because you're on a schedule. I'm on. We a gotta let you do. Obviously, you're a busy woman. Obviously. But not just your favorite place to go, but where is your favorite place to drink, or where is your favorite place where you have gotten very drunk, above average, mm. cons- consumed? <laughs> uh, Croatia for sure. Croatia. Croatia is a great place to. Nice. Drink. I wasn't prepared for that. I was going to expect some sort of like local bar around here. She's like, well, no. she said she just got back from New Orleans. I was, you know, shout out to the Big oh, Easy. But. Nola. <laughs> Shoot. You're right. Okay. And honestly, in Nola, I, I just drink champagne. Like I, I try to, because it's so crazy in Nola, I don't really, I've had a, one hand grenade that destroyed me. Those are like a famous drink, yeah. you know, yep. Um, destroyed me. I tried a sip of the hurricane thing terrible worst thing i've ever had in my life it tasted like dirty cough syrup um hated that one but yeah fun in in nola for sure but croatia good drinks um i don't know just like it's an interesting place the people are really nice shout out to croatia croatia home of home of king's landing 
There you go. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's where cool. it was filmed. Yeah. No, my buddy's a firefighter, and I saw on Instagram. I don't know how it worked out. I think his whole station, they all went to Croatia and did like a firefighter retreat, something or other. What? I want it a firefighter retreat in Croatia. Right. She's like, when? I want to go. <laughs> yeah. like, Thanks for the invite, Let me dude. know when uh, it happens next year. <laughs> yeah. I'm Is this married a, to a... a single firefighter's retreat? or uh, uh, <laughs> Not him, but uh, I'm sure there are some out there. So. Damn. Yeah. Buddy system. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I live in Santa Monica, so we have the the apparently the best looking firefighters. Is that right? That's what I've been told. I wouldn't be surprised if Santa Monica was like more of a looks-based hiring system for the firefighters. I think they have to submit a headshot. I've been They're told. Like, how, I don't know if how it's much real. can you bench press before <laughs> we hire? You I kind of love that if they do. It's like Baywatch. <laughs> they so they all during summertime, we have the like volleyball courts at Santa Monica Beach, and they all like line up and play. It's like there's women with beach chairs watching. I can games. believe that. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. It's entertaining for sure. Yeah, definitely not firefighter physique over here, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm on the Taco Tuesday physique, body by tacos. Taco Tuesday is a way better <laughs> physique, I think. I like it. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely more comfortable. But, uh, yeah. Who needs abs? I know. We give better hugs. It's true. I have, I have abs. They're just <laughs> it's true. hidden under yeah. wine, wine and tacos. They're protected under a blanket. I don't want them to get damaged. Yeah, yeah but they're there. Exactly. They're like, vintage. Uh, you know, like packing material. Right. It's yeah. travel. You don't want to damage travel. the goods. So <laughs> I like it. I keep them safe. Alrighty. So, uh, yeah. Anything else y'all want to talk about? Weather, the news, any sort of depressing nonsense like oh, that? Or God, no. It's Taco keep Tuesday. It we don't keep it happy. Yeah. It's Taco Always Tuesday. keep it happy on Taco yeah, Tuesday. We'll just eat guacamole then. Eat guacamole and uh, drink a marg and polish off this chorizo. Cool. All right. Well, I guess there you have it, everybody. That was another edition of the TacoTuesday.com podcast. Quick shout outs to Haradura. Waterloo, and always, as always, rather, don't forget to check out the TacoTuesday.com website, uh, see all the updates there, check out the podcast, see some new restaurants. And if you're a firefighter and you want to slide, <laughs> excuse me, if you're a firefighter and you want to slide into Lauren's DMs, where can people find you out on social media? Uh, you can find me at Wanderlust, W-A-N-D-E-R underscore flights, and that's on uh, Instagram. Especially if you're in Croatia. Yeah. Yeah. But not like a regular firefighter, though. She's looking for, like, the Santa Monica physique, I'm told. Yeah, yes. like yeah. Acapulco. You're going to be, like, yeah. a high-level firefighter, too. Okay, yeah, so no chumps. This girl's got standards. No chumps. <laughs> Mustache, <laughs> you're out. Um, cool. All right, guys. We're good. Cheers. Okay. And uh, we'll get out of here. Chin. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanks Taco Tuesday. Me. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Taco Tuesday.com. Get out of here.